Hi, it's me, Teacher Jean. In this lesson, you will learn about the loss of exponents. In our previous lesson, I already discussed about prime factorization using factor 3 and ladder method. The factor of 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, and that is written in the expanded form. And 2 times 2 times 2 can be written also as 2 cubed times 3. 2 cubed is considered as an exponential form. Now let's have 2 cubed. 2 is the base and 3 is the exponent or also known as the index, power, or order. Exponent indicates the number of times its base is used as a factor. And to indicate repeated multiplication, we can use natural numbers. Here, we can use the Kage Bunshen technique. Kage Bunshen no jutsu! And 2 times 2 times 2 is in the expanded form. If the exponent is 3, that means we multiply 2 3 times by itself. To get the value of 2 cubed, just simply multiply 2 times 2 4 times 2, we get 8. So the value of 2 cubed is 8. Speaking mathematically, given the expression, this read as a raised to the n power or a to the n. Next, we have a squared, a cubed. Next, we have a to the fourth power or a to the fourth or a raised to four. Now, let's have two raised to five. So again, using the Kage Bunshen technique, <laughs> Two times two times two times two times two. And to get the value, we just multiply two times two, four times two, eight times two, sixteen times two, thirty two. And the value of two raised to five is thirty two. Next, we have three cube. Is three cube equal to nine? What about three squared? Is that equal to 6? That is incorrect and common mistakes of students. Now take note, do not multiply the base to its exponent. Let's see what is the value of 3 cubed. So let's expand. 3 times 3 times 3. So multiply it 1 by 1. 3 times 3, 9 times 3, 27. So, the value of 3 cubed is 27. Before we proceed on the different rules of exponents, let's answer some few questions. First, think about this. Is the quantity of negative 5 squared equal to negative 5 squared? To answer that, let's expand and get the value of the 2 given. Let's start with the quantity of negative 5 squared. And that is equal to negative 5 times negative 5. So negative times negative is positive 25. Next, we have negative 5 squared. And that is equal to negative 5 times 5. And that is negative 25. Note that the expression negative 5 squared means you raise 5 to the second power before you apply the negative sign. In the first given the quantity negative 5 squared, if the negative sign is enclosed in the parenthesis, means it is included and used as factors two times. So the quantity of negative 5 squared is not equal to negative 5 squared. So the answer is no. Moving on to the next question, is the quantity of negative 1 to the 87th power is equal to 1 or negative 1? To answer that, let's have the examples. We have the quantity of negative 1 squared and that is equal to negative 1 times negative 1. We have positive 1. Next, we have the quantity of negative 1 cubed and that is equal to negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. So negative times negative is positive times negative. We have negative 1. Based on the given examples, we can say that a negative number enclosed in parentheses and raised to even number 0, 2, 4, so on and so forth is equal to positive value. 
and if a negative number is enclosed in parentheses and raised to add number 1, 3, 5, so on and so forth, is equal to negative value. So the quantity of negative 1 to the 87th power is equal to negative 1. Let's begin with the first law of exponent. We have the product rule. For any real numbers a and for all positive integers m and n, then a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. Now for you to understand, let's have some examples. We have the first one, a cubed times a to the fifth. So if there is no operation written on the given, that means it is multiplication. And we can apply the product rule. We keep or copy the base and add the exponent. So here, we copy the base a and add the exponent 3 plus 5. So we get a to the 8. Next, we have number 2, 2 squared times 2 to the 6th. Keep or copy the base 2, then add the exponent 2 plus 6. And we get 2 to the 8. Now, if the base is a non-zero number, we need to get the value by multiplying it 8 times by itself. So we get 256. Next, we have the third one, the quantity of 9b raised to 5 times the quantity of 3b. So we're going to multiply the coefficients, keep the base, and add the exponents. So we have the coefficient 9 times 3. Then copy the base b, add the exponent 5 plus the explicitly written 1 or imaginary 1. So we have 27b raised to 6. Next, we have the fourth one. The quantity of 1 over 4, c to the fourth, times the quantity of 16, c cubed, times c squared. So we have here, multiply the coefficient, 1 over 4, or 1 fourth, times 16, times the explicitly written 1 or imaginary 1, then copy the base c, add the exponent 4 plus 3 plus 2. So 16 divided by 4, we have 4. Times 1, we have 4, c raised to 9. Next, we have the quotient rule. For any real numbers a and m is greater than n and a is not equal to 0, we have a to the m divided by a to the n equals a to the m minus n. Let's have some examples for you to understand. We have the first one, x to the 7th divided by x to the 5th. Here, we keep or copy the base and subtract the exponents. So, we copy the base x, subtract the exponent 7 minus 5. We get x squared. Next, we have the second one, 3 to the 8 divided by 3 cubed. We copy the base 3, then subtract the exponent 8 minus 3. We get 3 raised to 5, or 3 to the 5th. Now, if the base is a non-zero number, we get the value by multiplying the base 5 times. So we get 243. Next, we have the third one, 15m to the 6th divided by 5m. Divide the coefficients, keep the base, and subtract the exponents. So we have 15 divided by 5, we get 3. Then copy the base m, subtract the exponent 6 minus 1, we get 3m to the 5th. Now let's have the power of a power. For any real numbers a and for all positive integers m and n, then a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n. Now let's have the examples for you to understand. We have b to the power of 5 to the power of 4. So here we keep or copy the base and multiply the exponents. So we copy the base b, multiply the exponent 5 times 4, we get b to the power of 20. Second, we have 2 cubed to the power of 2. So we copy the base 2, multiply the exponent 3 times 2. We have to keep the base and multiply the exponents and get the value if the base is a non-zero number. So we have 2 to the 6th and that is equal to 64. Next, we have the third one, 1 half squared to the power of 2. So we copy the base, 1 half, multiply the exponent 2 times 2. So we have to keep the base and multiply the exponents and get the value if the base is a non-zero number. 
So we have 1 half to the 4th power. So we're going to distribute the exponent 4 to both numerator and denominator. So take note if there is no exponent, it is understood we have 1 there, but no need to write it because it is explicitly written or imaginary 1. So we have 1 to the 4th over 2 to the 4th. And 1 to the 4th is equal to 1, 2 to the 4th is equal to 32. So we have 1 over 32. Next, we have the power of a product. For any real numbers a and b, for all positive integers m and n, then, the quantity of AB to the power of N is equal to A to the power of N times B to the power of N. So, as you can see, we distribute the exponent N to each base. And, the quantity of A over B to the power of N is equal to A to the power of N over B to the power of N. And, B is not equal to 0. Like what we did earlier, given the quantity of 1 over 2 to the 4th, we're going to distribute the exponent 4 to both numerator and denominator. So, let's have more examples. We have the quantity of c squared d cubed to the fifth. So we're going to distribute the exponent to each base and multiply the exponent. So as you can see, we distribute 5 to the first base c to the second base d. Then we copy the base c, then multiply the exponent 2 times 5, then copy the base d, then multiply the exponent 3 times 5. So we get c to the 10th power and d to the 15th power. Next, we have number 2. Given the quantity of negative 3 n to the 4th to the power of 2. Distribute the exponent to each base and multiply the exponents and get the value if the base is a non-zero number. So we're going to distribute 2 to the base negative 3 and to the base n. So we have the quantity of negative 3 squared. Copy the base n. Multiply the exponent 4 times 2. So we have negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 n to the 8. Next, we have the third one, the quantity of 3g squared over 4h to the third power. So again, we're going to distribute the exponent to each base and both numerator and denominator and multiply the exponents. So we're going to have 3 to the power of 1 times 3, g to the power of 2 times 3, over 4 to the power of 1 times 3, h to the power of 1 times 3. So we're going to have 3 cubed g to the 6th over 4 cubed h cubed. Now we're going to get the value if the base is a non-zero number. 3 cubed is equal to 27 g to the 6th over 4 cubed is equal to 64 h cubed. So we get 27 g to the 6th over 64 h cubed. Another rule is for zero exponents. Given x to the 5th divided by x to the 5th, by expanding the expression, we can have x times x times x times x times x to both numerator and denominator. Now, we can apply cancellation. So, we cancelled out x divided by x that is equal to 1. Next, by using the quotient rule, again, given x to the 5th divided by x to the 5th, we're going to copy the base x, then subtract the exponent 5 minus 5, we have x raised to 0. So, x raised to 0 is equal to 1, where x is not equal to 0. Now, let's have more examples. We have the first one, the quantity of 3 squared raised to 0. So, we get 1. Next, we have number 2, 256 raised to 0. The answer is still 1. Next, we have the quantity of negative 5 m cubed n squared n to the 7th raised to 0, the answer is 1. So any number or variable raised to 0, the answer is always 1. Now let's have number 4. 4 raised to 0 times 2 cubed times 3 squared. So we're going to simplify 4 squared that is equal to 1, 2 cubed that is equal to 8, 3 squared that is equal to 9. So multiply 1 times 8 times 9 and the product is 72. Next number 5, we have the quantity of x plus y cubed over the quantity of x plus y raised to 0. So quantity of x plus y raised to 0 is equal to 1. So the answer is the quantity of x plus y cubed. And for the last rule, we have the negative exponent. Now given x cubed, divided by x to the fifth by expanding the expression, 
that is equal to x times x times x on the numerator and x times x times x times x times x on the denominator. Now we're going to apply cancellation. We're going to cancel out x divided by x that is equal to 1 and we have the remaining x times x on the denominator. So the answer is 1 over x squared. Next, using the quotient rule, x cubed divided by x to the fifth, we're going to copy the base, then subtract the exponent 3 minus 5. And the answer is x to the negative 2 because negative 5 is greater than positive 3. Now, we can conclude that x to the negative n is equal to 1 over x to the n and x to the n is equal to 1 over x to the negative n where x is not equal to 0 and n is a counting number. So any quantity with a negative exponent is equal to the reciprocal of the quantity and the corresponding positive exponent. So let's have more example for you to understand. Let's have the first one, 5 to the negative 2. So we're going to get the reciprocal that is 1 over 5 squared. So the negative turn into positive as we get the reciprocal. Now we're going to get the value if the base is a non-zero number. So that is equal to 1 over 25. Next, we have number 2, the quantity of 3b to the negative 3. So we're going to have the reciprocal 1 over the quantity of 3b cubed. So we're going to distribute the exponent to each base using the power of a product. So we're going to have 1 over 3 cube b cube. And we're going to simplify 3 cube and that is equal to 1 over 27 b cube. Next, we have number 3, 3b to the negative 3, and that is equal to 1 over 3b cubed. So here, the base 3 is not raised to negative 3, the base b only. Now, it's your turn. Do it yourself. Simplify each expression and express your answer using positive exponents. Assume that all variables are non-zero. Number 1, 3a squared times 2, a to the 5th times a. Number 2, x to the 5th, y to the negative 3, w raised to 0. Number 3, 48, m to the 5th, n to the 8, divided by negative 6, m, n to the 8. Number 4, the quantity of 5z squared to the 3rd power. Number 5, the quantity of x, y to the 5th over z cubed to the 3rd power. Don't forget to comment down below your answer. Happy learning! Thanks for watching! Please like and share. And don't forget to subscribe on my channel and click the bell button so that you will be notified whenever I'm going to upload a new one. Maraming salamat!